This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to sign up using the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. On Monday evening, the UK government published its long-awaited Northern Ireland Protocol Bill, explicitly announcing its intention to unilaterally amend an international treaty with the EU. As you'd expect, this hasn't gone down too well on the continent, with the EU starting legal proceedings against the UK for what they see as a violation of international law. Now, while things probably won't come to a head for a few more months, the bill still needs to make it through Parliament after all. If EU-UK relations continue to deteriorate, a trade war between the two certainly isn't impossible. On Tuesday, we made a video explaining the entire proceedings, and we ended that video by posing a question. Who would win that trade war? The UK or the EU? So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at that hypothetical trade war, how it would pan out, and who would win. By the way, talking about Britain, if you didn't know already, we have a separate TLDR UK channel where we discuss British politics, as well as TLDR US and TLDR Global. They're all linked below. Anyway, before we get to the trade war itself, let's explain how we might get there. As we just mentioned, on Monday, the UK government published its much-anticipated Northern Ireland Protocol Bill. And if it passes, the bill will basically do two things unilaterally amend the Northern Ireland Protocol and give UK ministers further power to amend the protocol in the future. Now, that might sound a little confusing, so let's clarify the names of these two key pieces of legislation. This new UK bill is called the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill, and it's been drawn up to amend a section of the Brexit withdrawal agreement known as the Northern Ireland Protocol. This might get confusing. Anyway, the bill would unilaterally amend the protocol to reduce customs and regulatory checks, which the EU considers a threat to the integrity of the single market, retake control of Northern Ireland's VAT and subsidy regime, which is limited by EU law under the original protocol, and get rid of the ECJ in dispute settlements. Obviously, all three of these things directly contradict the protocol. And if that wasn't bad enough for the EU, the bill also gives UK ministers sweeping powers to further amend the protocol in the future. According to section 15 of the bill, a minister can unilaterally amend not just the protocol, but also any related provision of the EU withdrawal agreement for, quote, permitted purposes, where permitted purposes means any of these nine criteria. As you can see, these permitted purposes are ridiculously vague. They include safeguarding the territorial or constitutional integrity of the United Kingdom, safeguarding not just the Belfast Agreement, but even the functioning of the Belfast Agreement, and safeguarding the environment, whatever that means. In practice, this basically gives UK ministers unlimited scope to unilaterally amend the protocol. And as I've mentioned, and you probably can guess, this hasn't gone down too well with the EU, who've opened up two new legal proceedings against the UK and restarting an action it began in March 2021 for another alleged breach of the protocol. Now, all of these legal proceedings aren't directly related to the new bill because it's yet to even become law yet. But they're clearly a reaction to the bill as a statement of intent from the UK government. The European Commission also published two command papers setting out their counter-proposals for reducing customs and phytosanitary checks, but nothing on VAT, state subsidies, or the role of the ECJ. Clearly then, the two sides are pretty far apart on this issue, and negotiations are beginning to look futile, which means that if the bill passes in its current form, the EU will likely resort to some pretty extreme measures. Broadly, we can see three options for the EU here. Firstly, they could scrap the entire Brexit agreement via Article 779, although that requires a year's notice. Secondly, they could suspend the deal via Article 521, although that requires a nine-month notice period. But the third, perhaps most extreme option, would be suspending access to EU waters via Article 506, which requires just seven days' notice. If the EU decided to go for this option, and the UK didn't back down, then we could be looking at a full-on trade war between the two sides. Now, we should be clear here that we're not saying a trade war is definitely going to happen. 
there could still be a surprise breakthrough in negotiations, or the bill might be watered down by the Lords, or the EU might decide that trade retaliation would risk undermining European unity on Ukraine. It's also possible that in the meantime, Boris Johnson might be replaced by a more moderate leader. Nonetheless, it's true to say that a trade war is now looking more likely than at any time since the Brexit deal was first agreed, and that this is, well, pretty crazy stuff. So what would actually happen in a trade war? Who would win? Well, to answer that question, there are two aspects worth considering, the economics and the politics. Let's start with the economics, and it's not good news for Britain, because the UK is not in a strong position economically. For one, it's far more dependent on EU goods than the EU is on UK goods. The EU accounts for about 40% of the UK's total trade, while the UK accounts for just 10% of the EU's total trade. And Britain's already suffering from some of the highest inflation in Europe. Therefore, tariffs and trade restrictions would only push prices higher, causing yet more economic pain. When it comes to the politics, though, this one's a little more complicated. On the one hand, Johnson and his government are in a pretty weak position at the moment, having only narrowly survived a no-confidence vote last week. So, a trade war with the EU might be politically costly, especially given that it will probably involve heavy tariffs on politically valuable exports like farming, fishing, and car manufacturing. And it's reasonable to expect these things, because it's exactly what the EU did during their trade war with the US a few years ago, when they focused their tariffs on politically sensitive exports like Harley-Davidson bikes, Levi's jeans, and Jack Daniels whiskey to put political pressure on Trump. However, despite the potential political cost, Johnson will probably be hoping that an EU-UK trade war will reinvigorate the Brexit debate, something that he capitalised on so successfully back in 2019. And if Johnson feels like a trade war with the EU will shore up his position politically by appealing to the right wing of the Conservative Party and his Brexit-loving base, he might have the political capital to ride it out and even enthusiasm to pull Britain into a trade war to boost his standing. But there are reasons to be sceptical here. After all, Johnson did claim to have got Brexit done back in 2019, and even the most pro-Brexit wings of the electorate aren't going to be as keen on showing Brussels who's boss if it involves pushing inflation well above 10%. Ultimately though, while the UK might be worst affected by a trade war, it would be costly for both sides and create yet another rift in EU-UK relations. At a time of rising inflation and a war on the continent, this really isn't what Europe needs, which is why both sides should be doing everything they can to avoid it. On the EU side, this might involve showing more flexibility when it comes to checks, and on the UK side, that will probably involve, well, not routinely breaking international law. When it comes to a trade war though, we better have a good grasp on maths and science, so I think all of Europe needs a membership to Brilliant. Brilliant is an online STEM learning platform where you can learn everything you need to know to better understand the modern world. In fact, that's kind of what TLDR is all about too, taking complex subjects that seem scary from the outside and turning them into something more understandable, and in turn, making the world a less daunting place. And understanding STEM better could mean all kinds of things for you. It could help you thrive at work, improve your grades at school, or even just help you learn something exciting and new. No matter what your reason is, taking some time to learn with Brilliant is a whole lot more fun than the boring computer science lectures that I had to take at university. There's no long talks and no textbooks. It's all about interactive experiences that have been put together by experts in their field to help you learn by doing. So if you want to take your next step with STEM and support the channel at the same time, then you can sign up to Brilliant at brilliant.org forward slash TLDREU. And the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for supporting the channel.